Hello guys and welcome back to the Babylonians channel. Today we're going to talk about manifold finance and these uh, MEV opportunities once Eve moves into uh, this uh, proof of stake. So the token for manifold finance is full and you can see that over the past three months it has done a very impressive run out from the lows of uh, $10 uh, to its peak of about $80 recently. And their max supply is only $2 million and the protocol revenue will all be distributed back to uh, the stakers of full. So why is Manifold Finance so important? Because MEV is a very key uh, component, especially in the proof of stake ecosystem. So it can be summarized in this uh, paragraph, MEV can increase validator rewards by 75% or give an APR of 12.86% rather than a non-MEV APR of 7.35%. So any competitive validator will need access to MEV. Now why is this important? Because as a validator, you want uh, everyone to stick their ETH with you, right? So if some other validator is able to offer much higher APR, then you are definitely going to lose out uh, in the long term. And this will create a very huge uh, centralization risk. And you can see over here in Vitalik notes, he explains that block producer is in a position to use sophisticated strategies to choose which transactions to include to take advantage of such uh, MEV opportunities to maximize their profits. So you end up with a situation where validators with the most uh, technical resource, with the most money, are able to build the most sophisticated strategies uh, to be able to capture all these uh, MEV profits. And what happens after that is everybody will just uh, go to stick with this uh, validator. And that's why uh, it will create this uh, centralization risk. So the solution here is this uh, proposal builder separation which separates the block building part from the validators because most validators they have no idea how to run uh, all these uh, sophisticated strategies right you need a lot of uh, uh, phds and mathematical uh, complex equations to do all these uh, strategies so you want to equalize the playing field for validators and outsource this uh, MEV part to another people called the builders. So that is basically what our PBS is all about. Now before we go on to talk about manifold finance, uh, here is what is uh, MEV. So MEV is a maximum extractable value. It's the profit that comes from reordering transactions from the blocks they propose. So some examples of MEV are arbitrage, sandwich, liquidation. You can see that over the past few days they are making uh, about two, three hundred thousand from uh, all these uh, MEV profits. And why is block building? Block building is a new role introduced by uh, PBS. So validators will sell block space to specialized third parties called block builders who collect and sequence transactions to produce block. And block builders want to produce a block that maximizes the fees in the form of priority fees and MVV. So all this might sound pretty confusing right now. So I have uh, chart out a diagram to visualize the whole process flow. So it starts from the user intent. So for example, I want to make a swap of 100 ETH uh, to USDC. So what happens here is there are two routes that you can go. By default, it goes to the public RPC route. So your transaction will be in the public mean pool. And what happens is all these MEV bots will try to uh, front run you or sandwich attack you uh, to extract all these uh, MEV profits. Or either that you can send your transaction to a private RPC. So this is called uh, private order flows. And this will only be visible to uh, whichever builder who set up uh, this RPC node. And that's why you can see uh, Tom say that the biggest, most valuable land grab that no one is talking about in Ethereum is becoming a user's default RPC endpoint. Because once you become the RPC endpoint, then essentially you are capturing all their transactions and you have the power and ability uh, to sort all these uh, transactions. So the four key players here are users and searchers, block builders, relayers, and validators. So the role of users and searchers is to scout for all these transactions and reorder them in such a way that they will extract MEV, the best uh, possible outcome uh, that use the maximum profit. So they'll order all these transactions into bundles and they'll send them to the block builders. So that's why you can see that searches are on the micro level, they, they are on the transaction level, but block builders, they are responsible for optimizing the combination of all these different bundles submitted by hundreds and thousands of uh, different searches out there. So they will try to build the most profitable block in 12 seconds by optimizing combination of bundles from searches, as you can see uh, over here. And this block will be sent over 
uh, to the validators through this middleman called relayers. So relayers will validate uh, the validity of the content inside the blog and they'll keep it private. So they'll send the header for the validators to sign and then send back. And then once everything is confirmed, validators will include the block into the next block in the blockchain. So that's basically the whole idea of how uh, the process flow works. And user searchers here will pay a bribe uh, for their bundles to be included in the block builder. And block builder will pay a fee to the validators uh, for them to include their block. So the higher the chance of the block builder being accepted by validators, the more users and searchers want to uh, have their bundles included in the block builder's uh, block. So this creates a positive loop effect as you can see uh, over here, when the block builder that has the exclusive private order flow will have a higher value blocks and this will lead to them uh, being the consistent winner and this will justify exclusive agreement and more people will want to uh, have their transactions to be included in this uh, particular block builder. So where does Manifold Finance fit into this uh, whole equation? Now Manifold Finance is a block builder as well as a relayer. So block builder is a very very new economic agent in the proof of stake ecosystem and nobody knows how the dynamic, uh, the game theory, the politics and uh, all these things will play out but they are definitely a new entrant uh, as compared to our current proof of stake where you commonly only hear uh, miners, users but after the merge, you will definitely hear uh, this term block builders are uh, coming out a lot so Manifold Finance is a block builder and relayer and they also have their own uh, private RPC called Secure RPC and Manifold Finance has already uh, partner out with Sushi for their Secure RPC so all transactions on Sushi will go through their Secure RPC and they have already captured one of the key leader index so this is a win-win situation for uh, Sushi Swap users also because now their transactions will be protected and there won't be any uh, MEV arbitrage or front-running uh, attacks to the user and all the MEV profits will be split 50-50 uh, between the Sushi ecosystem as well as the uh, Manifold Finance ecosystem. So I've done a spreadsheet to calculate what is the estimated use. So on their telegram, they say that uh, the monthly revenue from Sushi is between around 450,000 to 1.8 million max. But I think it's around uh, 500,000. So if you assume that there are 2 million fold is all 100% stake, the profits per each fold would be from 10 cents to 45 cents. This is after the 50% split and based on the current market price now, uh, now it's about $74, it should be about 1.8% yield to 7.3%. And this revenue is not live yet, it will only come live after uh, the merge event happens. And Manifold Finance has also mentioned that they are partnering up with Balancer and Layer Zero. So another two key players in the DEX ecosystem. So if you assume that the volume is about 40% of uh, Sushi, then this revenue is just 40% uh, times whatever that is made from Sushi. So this will give an additional of 0.7% to 2.7%. So the total addressable market for MEV is actually very very huge. So you can see that over here cumulative is about 6-700 million already. And you can also see from uh, Flashbot Explorer that the total extracted MEV is about uh, 700 million now and the last 24 hours is about 77,000 and again if you look at another side you can also see that uh, trading profits is uh, uh, all between uh, 200 to 300,000 uh, every day so all these MEV profits will have to go somewhere right usually this is uh, captured by the traders, the arbitragers, the searchers uh, all those who have the technical resource to uh, order all these uh, transactions so if you plug in all these figures let's say the past 30 day average MEV profits is 200,000 the annualized profit is about 73 million. Now this is uh, based on this figure, which is based on this uh, site. But then on the Flashbot Explorer site, you can see that the last 30 day is about uh, 2 million. So I don't know why there is uh, such a discrepancy, but this is the annualized profit for both sides. So you can play around with the assumptions and see uh, which one to take. But if we take a conservative 10% market share, then the annualized revenue to Manifold based on all these uh, MVV profits is actually 7 million and assuming a uh, profit distribution to stakers is 50% you get about a dollar and 80 for each uh, fold that is staked so this is another additional 2% plus uh, for the fold stakers now all these are really really just uh, ballpark assumptions uh, and it is not confirmed uh, how all these uh, revenue distribution model works yet but this is just based on 
uh, my own logical understanding which may or may not be incorrect and finally there is also uh, revenue from uh, market makers so right now they have already secured uh, two out of five uh, top market makers as you can see over here so it could be uh, alabama and winter milk so we don't know who is it but they are the two largest uh, on-chain market maker and during the trial they have uh, generated extra 150 million uh, annualized profit for the market makers this is not being monetized yet so if we assume that there's a 50 percent uh, profit sharing then this will be really really huge for the full stakers which i think is uh, quite unlikely so i really don't know how uh, this 150 additional profits would be distributed to the full stakers and whether will it also be uh, distributed but this is work in progress at the moment so the main revenue sources right now is from the sushi router and this will be split 50 50 and it is expected to come early september uh, after the merge and also the next one is their balancer layer zero integration and moving forward the future is this uh, block builder activity and monetizing all the flows from the market makers and finally is this uh, block pace auctioning which is like a, a block space market so in the community call he actually said that uh, the mev from this uh, sushi router integration is actually not the main bulk of their revenue the main bulk is actually coming from the block space market so we have no idea how uh, this works but it can be think of somewhat along the line of uh, selling your block space in advance uh, like two three four or ten blocks uh, to market makers or some other uh, stakeholders and if you think about it block space is a commodity right so in a commodity market there's also all these kind of uh, futures contract uh, options and derivative uh, that you can play around with so this could be quite a huge market uh, that is quite interesting to see uh, how all this plays out so right now the price has pumped a lot already and if you look at the current use it's actually uh, just around two three percent which I, I don't think is uh, quite attractive but there's a lot of uh, wheels and uh, big boys that are on the sideline are uh, trying to uh, get a back of this uh, foe so hopefully it dips and we can load a back and also uh, this coincides very well with the if merge narrative because after the merge block builder become a key player in the whole market so that's it for this video thanks again for watching and if you want access to this uh, spreadsheet as well as the chart that i done uh, over here uh, you can come over to my notion page under personal excel analysis and personal sketches and if you find this video helpful i would appreciate if you can like share give a thumbs up subscribe and i'll see you in the next one bye <laughs>